Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. First up, Africa's got to shift its relationship with Europe if the continent's to get the most out of its own resources. The call comes from Ghana's president during his trip to Paris on Thursday. Also, suspected fatal levels of smog in one of the most polluted areas in the world is at the heart of a court case being brought against a South African state. NGOs accuse authorities of violating people's constitutional environmental rights. And in a nail-biting battle, Africa Cup of Nations favourite Algeria defeat Ivory Coast for a place in the semi-finals. The Desert Foxes are now due for a showdown with Nigeria this weekend. But first, Ghana's called for a change in the dynamic of the relationship between Africa and Europe. President Nana Akufo-Addo is currently in France and made the statement while speaking to hundreds of representatives of the African diaspora here in the French capital. Nicolas Chemin has more. 400 representatives of the African diaspora in France were gathered in the Elysee Palace. During two hours, some of them were able to ask questions to the presidents of Ghana and France. Nana Akufo Addo said Africa had to be more self reliant, and he encouraged the diaspora to return to Africa. The destiny of all black people in the world is bound up with Africa. And a performing Africa elevates the status of all black people around the world. And non performing Africa continues the situation where black people around the world are looked at. Emmanuel Macron gave an example of the policies he wants to implement. He said that African students should not be encouraged to study in Europe. Instead, he wants France to help fund universities on the continent. I think that if we don't change the way we look at Africa, France will never be at peace with itself. Because France has a bit of Africa inside it, in its heart. So we must find a new equilibrium. Et donc on doit réussir aussi à penser, voilà, ce nouveau pivot que j'évoquais, ce rééquilibrage. With this debate, Macron's aim once again was to show that France-Afrique, the name given to the murky relationship Paris used to have with African states and especially its former colonies, is over. And by inviting the Ghanaian president, he also wanted to demonstrate that unlike many of his predecessors, he is not only interested in French-speaking countries. Now, 38 Shiite Muslim protesters have been charged over violent clashes with police earlier this week, in which the Islamic movement of Nigeria says that two of its members were shot dead. Police claim that they used minimum force. The unrest on Tuesday at Nigeria's National Assembly led to the suspension of sessions in Abuja. The IMN accused authorities of persecution and has been calling for the release of their leader, Sheikh Ibrahim Zaksaki has been in custody since 2015. He was held without charge until 2018. Rights groups say that security forces have killed around 400 IMM protesters since then. Well, in other news, South African NGOs are taking the state to court, accusing it of violating people's constitutional right to a healthy environment. At the heart of the case is one of the most polluted areas in the world, the South African Haifeld, where smog is suspected as being linked to the premature deaths of hundreds of locals. Take a look. The people of Mpumalelweni, a township in the Mpumalanga province, are suffocating. Asimale has been an asthmatic since she was four months old. Her mask is useless to her since medical oxygen is too expensive. Her mother feels like there is only one solution. I wish to move away, yeah. I wish to move away because this place is not right. A few streets away, Lifa suffers from the same symptoms. His breathing problems began when he moved to the Haifeld region, two hours outside of Johannesburg. I find it difficult to breathe. Sometimes I feel like I'm really going to die. It's bad. The region alone produces 80% of South African coal and is one of the most polluted in the world. According to environmental groups, between 300 and 650 people die each year from respiratory diseases linked to pollution. And it's very clear that there are some people who come from other provinces. And when they get to 
Middlebank or around Highfield, they start getting sick because of respiratory um, illnesses, uh, allergic rhinitis and all that. When they leave this area, we find that some of them get better. The national electricity company ESCOM owns the 12 coal plants in the region. Local activists say blame lies with the state because the South African constitution is one of the few globally that guarantees people's right to a healthy environment. They are violating our rights. They are violating our right to clean air. They are violating our right to health. That's the truth. According to the government, the air in the high felt is already cleaner than it was a few years ago. But they admit that real improvement will take time. Sadly, for many patients, it may be too late to avoid the deadly effects of pollution. Well, it's Tunisia that's lined up to play Senegal on Sunday in the semi-final of the Africa Cup of Nations after beating Madagascar's Barriers 3-0 in Cairo. Now, the Barriers had been hoping for another chapter in a fairy tale run that's taken the underdogs further than anyone expected. They may be out, but they certainly haven't brought their supporters down. Having come in as the, at their first time in the, the tournament, ranking 108th in the world on arrival, despite the odds being stacked against them, the Barriers surged onwards and were undefeated in their first four matches in the Africa Cup of Nations. Their progress so far has sparked barrier fever at homes, where they've won the hearts of millions of fans despite their loss on Thursday. Gael Borgia tells us more. All day long, everywhere, the same echo. Since Madagascar qualified in the quarterfinals of the Africa Cup of Nations, barrier fever has taken over the capital. Antai and his eight-year-old son made a two-hour bus trip for just one thing, to buy a barrier T-shirt. But the three-euro purchase is a luxury. Anta has three children, but earns just 125 euros a month. I buy it even if I don't have money, even if I haven't received my salary. I do it to make my son happy. I don't buy such expensive things every day. It's a unique moment. It's like a celebration for us. That's why we bought it. Mamsua greets us in her improvised street workshop with blank key rings bought from a Chinese wholesaler and badly printed photos of barrier players, she's earning 18 euros a day, twice as much as usual. I love the Bereas. If they make it to the final, I could get a four-wheel drive. <laughs> barrier fever's also seen the team's charity, Barrier Can 2019, land big deals with banks and mobile phone companies. Yuan is the founder of a fast food chain and paid for the image reproduction rights of the squad. It's a way to support charities and has been a successful communication operation. We have this burger that sells well. It's kind of crazy at the moment. People go out, have fun, and it's certainly good for the economy. Now Madagascar's gold is not vanilla anymore. It's barrier shirts. I had clients who were ready to spend half of their monthly wage to get a shirt, which gives you an idea of how big the Africa Cup of Nations is here. Even after the barriers lost tonight, they're still winners in their fans' eyes as they've progressed far further than people expected. And Algeria are also through to the semi-finals of the Africa Cup of Nations. The Desert Foxes battled through to beat Ivory Coast 4-3 on penalties after a one-all draw after extra time. It was a nail-biting fight to the finish. Algeria will now face a showdown with Nigeria. Clovis Casales followed the game with fans at Paris's Arab World Institute. In Algeria, but also in France, the Desert Foxes have many, many supporters here in Paris, in the Institute for the Arab World. Well, there was a giant screen, a free event, and hundreds of uh, supporters of the Algerian team gathered. They had to wait until the penalty shootout to see their favorite team win in this quarterfinal of the Africa Cup of Nations. Algeria wins against the Ivory Coast, and the supporters of the so-called Desert Foxes are very, very happy. Take a listen. So tonight was an incredible emotion, it was an incredible feeling. We, we had very good 
game and uh, I think we, we can trust in this team. We are in the semi-final now, so we have all our chances in this competition. So we, we can do it, we can win it. We have all that competences and potential from our coach and also the players. And what we saw, you saw today, it was an incredible feeling. Well, I feel good now, but I nearly had a heart attack. When uh, was the penalty, I couldn't watch them. And it was really difficult. It was a good game until we missed the penalty. And uh, then uh, we missed a lot of chance. And uh, I thought that is uh, a luck. And today is not going to be our day. But uh, Alhamdulillah, we won. And uh, I hope we will, we will get the, the National African Cup. Yeah, so the place was very good. The atmosphere was is in, the, in the same time, very intense, but very friendly. I felt like at home. And it's good to see all these people gathering uh, in the tense political context in Algeria. We see that unity is possible in Algeria and nothing is impossible for Algerians. Well, that's it for Iron Africa for now. Thanks for joining us. Do so again. Take care.